Right, today we're going to turn our attention to uh, the crankshaft, which is uh, made up of five pieces. Um, mild steel. Oops. <clears throat> Three pieces of uh, bar stock mild steel and a couple of little pieces for the uh, junction plates. Um, it's fairly straightforward turning, um, just got to be a little bit um, precise on, on the, uh, the press fit, um, otherwise it's not going to work properly. So it's over to the lathe initially, turn these three pieces and then I'll get back over to the mill and turn a couple of these so we can put it all together. Alright, so the uh, first piece up is this piece. I'm going to turn the uh, M8 there, so I'm going to turn that down to 8mm. Then I'm going to turn this down to 10 And then I'm going to uh, put this little shoulder on and this piece. But to put these on, I should probably, I'll take it out of the chuck and put it in a, a collet chuck just so I can finish this end off properly. Right, initially I've got to turn it, the whole thing down to 14 millimetres. Got to take um, four millimeters off of this down to eight millimeters at uh, 22 long, which is this dimension here. That's the one I'm now going to cut out down to eight millimeters. I'm not going to put the thread on at the moment at uh, 26 millimeters long. Sorry, is the one I'm cutting now. Now going to turn this down to um, 10 millimeters close fit 22 millimeters in this is for the crank to sorry the flywheel to fit onto take it out of here, put it in an 8mm collar and turn the other end. No, I'm, I'm not going to take it out and put it in a collar because I'm going to lose concentricity and purely because it's the crankshaft I need to main, maintain as much concentricity as possible. So I'm going to cut it in here. What I'm going to do is just gouge some of this out so that I can get this cut down to dimension in the other direction. Right, the problem I've got now is I haven't got a left hand cutter. Um, isn't it? I have got a high speed steel cutter if I can get it in that is. I might need 
need to make that bit bigger. Yeah, I'm not going to get that in, so let's turn that down. Right, I should have plenty of room to get in there now with the high speed uh, steel cutter. Got that down to size, I can now part that off. That's the, uh, the first piece, which is this piece here. Okay, just got to put the thread on there. I'm not going to do that at the moment, but. Uh, I will probably include it in this video, but um, I'm actually waiting for um, a new ta a new die. I haven't got a die to fit this at the moment, so I'm going to wait until I get that, and then I'll put the thread on there. That's to hold the flywheel on. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's coming on. All right, going to make um, this piece next. This center piece calls up 10 millimeter variable fit. Um, that's got to be machined. That, that's got to be machined so that it fits the bearing on the uh, crankshaft, which is slightly under 10 millimeter by a couple of microns. So when I get near, I'll just be trial fitting this. That's a lovely fit that is. I overran on the first bit so I'm just going to cut that off but that, that's, that's perfect. Alright, clean that end up now. Two microns over. Yeah. Yeah. Right, just lining the cutter up with that shoulder just so I can set the DRO. I set that on zero which means I've then got 12 millimeters over there to come down to which is about there. Okay good. So now I can machine this down to 7 mil the same as that side. couple of microns over, perfect. Setting the DRO on the edge of the cutter, move six millimeters that way and part it off.
There you go, lovely fit. got the uh, three pieces of the uh, crankshaft done here apart from the thread on that one which I'm going to attend to later so we've got these three pieces sorted out just got to make the two bits there we've got to make two of these which are these two pieces to join all of the crank together so let's get over to the mill and get these machined down firstly I need to establish a, 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 a well a reference surface I don't need to yeah need to get a reference surface so I'm going to use the um, the mill scale parts to start with just to get the first cut underway I'm going to mill both of these at the same time right let's get these milled off now got a, a reference surface so we can uh, mill the rest of the piece down to that now <laughs> by making the uh, final pass in that direction on this side because of the rotation of the cutter it's pushing the burrs back into the piece and similarly along the back edge the rotation of the cutter so you shouldn't get any burrs on, on this edge on this these both these edges which is how it is they clean so anyway let's get these out and uh, moved around for the next surface these lined up now um, what I've got to do is just um, center find them find the centers and both directions obviously there's a, what I can do is I can use the absolute on the DRO for this one and the incremental for this one which will give me 
my exact positions for drilling. That's the two pieces cut, um, bored out I should say. Right, I'm just going to get these cleaned up, finished off, and then I'm going to press the uh, crank uh, shaft into them. I've got a, a five inch vise that I'm going to uh, use to press these in. There they are, cleaned up. So what I'm going to do now is uh, lay them out and use this 5 inch vise to press them in. Alright, that's the, uh, the layout order. So if I keep them in that order, I should be able to press them in quite nicely on this, on this other vise, the one that's that way. I'll uh, turn the camera on it in a minute. There we have it. One crankshaft. That's all folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. I would also appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button because that will uh, enable me to grow the channel so that I can keep making these videos. Please leave a comment or a question. I do read all of the comments and reply to as many as I can. Thanks for watching.